I'm Donnie, and for about the last year, I've put a lot of my time and effort into carving out space for heathens and pagans to connect with each other, both online and in person in my local community. One of the things that I've learned seeing people who have caught a whiff of this paganism thing in the ether, out in the world, and gone looking for more information or looking for sources, is that what they're really looking for isn't myths and stories. They're not looking for lists of items that each god or goddess wants you to offer to them, right? What they're really looking for is examples of lived ritual, examples of a lived faith for people who have been doing this for a long time. Um, and as many of you have probably noticed if you're watching this video, is that, that there is an incredible dearth of that kind of information. So I decided a couple months ago that I was going to plan a YouTube channel. And one of the purposes of my channel, what I really want it to become, is a, a place where people can come and see um, not me talking about what is heathenry and what is paganism and uh, making all of these pres prescriptivist statements about what is this faith? What is this religion? Is it a magic practice? Is it this? Is it that? I'm happy to share all of my personal thoughts and ideas about that, but really what I think the most important thing is, and the thing that I really want to share the most, is examples of how I live my faith at home and in a ritual community. So what does that mean? For me, that means ritual. That means devotional activity prayer writing, ritual crafting, making altar spaces, dedicating those altar spaces to specific deities or not, um, leaving them as kind of all-purpose altar spaces, um, and performing rituals in those sacred spaces that you create around your house. Um, and really making a habit, and the key word here is habit, right? A daily and a weekly habit of performing ritual and honoring the gods and goddesses that are important in your life. As I mentioned, there is an incredible dearth of this kind of information. There's an incredible uh, lack of people showing what they do. One of the channels that I found when I was looking for examples of this a long time ago was the Wind in the World Tree. And I will link to that channel in the, in the video description. And I'll show you an example of something that I've used from Beofeld, from the owner of that channel, and crafting my own ritual practice and my own kind of hearth cult at home. Um, that is a term that's really important to me, so I'll take a minute to explain it to you here. A hearth cult is um, a form, a set of ritual, a ritual habit that you develop at home. Um, maybe you uh, tend to honor certain gods and goddesses in the household. Um, maybe you do your rituals at home in a very specific way. You kind of develop traditions and patterns to the way that you do these things. This is all a hearth cult. Nobody can tell you what that needs, what that should look like, or what, what they can only tell you what that could look like, show you examples of their own practices. Um, and uh, I want uh, to really encourage all of you that are viewing this to feel empowered to replicate, um, replicate things that you see other people doing, build on them, twist them, make them into your own thing. Um, the thing about ritual is that it's very personal and it's very flexible. There's, there's no right or wrong way to do ritual. Um, there are a lot of people that come into a pagan faith, um, specifically a Germanic pagan faith, um, from system magic practices, magic systems. Um, and I do air quotes around that because it's incredibly hard to define what that is, um, as opposed to what I consider a, a faith or a religion. Um, a magic practice is a very systematic and uh, well-established way of performing rituals that is supposed to yield some kind of result or effect on the world around you. Um, I don't myself personally practice magic. I don't feel a need to do magic. I don't think that there's anything wrong with doing so, um, but I think that the root of magical power comes from a well-established relationship with the gods. I don't think that it's possible to just do magic without having any kind of established connection with your own inner spiritual world and with the world of the gods and spirits that exists outside of our bodies. Um, so I think that no matter whether or not you're looking 
to practice magic, whether or not you're looking for things like Seethe or uh, Wicca or other systems that are really specifically magical systems, um, it all starts with faith and it all starts with a, a deep spiritual connection to these beings. So for me, that's all it is. Right, it's my faith, and I will talk in another video um, all about what being heathen means to me, how I found the gods, and uh, all of those juicy details. But this video is really centered all around the ritual. So today is Sunday, and as part of my hearth cult, every Sunday I perform a ritual to the sun goddess Sunna, um, and I'm going to show you that ritual today and walk you through all of the different elements of that ritual. What is on my altar? What do I offer? What are the prayers like? So on and so forth. Rituals can be very long or they can be very short. My rituals tend to be rather short um, and it's just a way of kind of spending a few minutes with um, a god or goddess that you're honoring and to really uh, sit in that connection for a while um, and maybe set the tone for a day. Um, so, for instance, after a Sunday ritual, I will typically um, take some time to water my plants. And I've honored the sun goddess. The sun makes the plants grow. And so I will typically care for my plants on Sunday and use that as kind of a devotional activity to build a stronger connection with Sunan. So uh, before we get started, I just want to say that, um, and I'll probably mention this a couple times throughout this video, um, anything that you see today, you may use. It doesn't belong to me. It belongs to the goddess. Um, I don't need to be cited. I don't need you to say that you found this information with me. I do use things that I've taken from other people. I have cited that in this video description. You can feel free to go to those websites, go to those channels, look at that kind of material and decide if you want to use it for yourself. Um, some of those sites will ask you to credit them. I personally don't feel that prayer and ritual should be considered intellectual property. So I'm going to leave that up to you. Out of respect for the people that have originally written these prayers, I do credit them. I tell you where I found them. Um, but I do want to take this little moment to get on my soapbox and say that things that we write that are meant to honor the gods should belong to the gods and not to us. So uh, I'll just put that there. And I will say that anything that I personally have written, if you uh, watch future videos that I will make um, or other videos on this channel, you'll probably see a lot of material that I myself have written. Feel free to use it. You don't need to cite me. You don't need to credit me. All of the material that I have written for, for uh, prayer and ritual belongs to the god or goddess that I've written it for. Um, I want it to be that way. I think it should be that way universally in our faith. Um, and so I just want to uh, make that invitation to you. So let's take a moment and let's go uh, over to the altar and I will walk you through everything that's on my altar, give you a little introduction to uh, ritual and the way that I do this ritual. And then when we're done with that, we'll come back here and talk a little bit more about um, Sundays. So let me show you around the altar space. These are two of a few altars that I have in my house. Um, this is an all-purpose altar that's here for general rituals. Um, I tend to do rituals at the altar that feels right for the particular deity or spirit that I'm honoring at that time. Um, but I do have some, some altars that are dedicated to specific gods and goddesses. This, here is, uh, this space here is dedicated specifically to Sunna, the sun goddess. Um, so I have uh, matches, which I share, which I use to light the candles. Um, I do have a little abalone shell here. Um, abalone shell doesn't have any particular significance for me. I know some people ascribe some kind of a significance to it, but for me, it's just a convenient and aesthetic looking um, dish to hold some salt where I can extinguish a flame very easily. So this is more of a safety item than it is a ritual item. Um, but this is where I'll ext extinguish a match or a flame that I've lit. Um, I do have the offering space, so I just have a stone here. Um, there's some items here that came from my old garden when I lived in Brooklyn. So there's a bird skull here that I came, that came out of the garden and some snail shells. 
Um, as a lot of pagans do, I really like nature totems. I keep a lot of nature totems in my house. Um, I don't, of course, uh, I personally don't ascribe any kind of a specific religious or like magical significance to these items. They're just here as um, offerings, as, as uh, ways for me to remind myself of the coming and going of life and, and the circle of life. Um, I have a stone dish here. Um, this dish is very special. I found it um, in a secondhand shop. I find a lot of my stuff in antique stores or they get, it gets given to me um, by specific people or I find it at events or it's made by people that are special to me. So I tend to kind of uh, gravitate specifically towards um, there's some birds building a nest out here, so don't mind them. Um, I tend to gravitate towards items that feel very significant to me, that kind of draw me to them. So there's this um, bowl which has uh, fossils in it. Um, and there's uh, some ammonite fossils inside the stone. Um, it's soapstone, it's very soft. Um, and I did try to scrub it out at one point and I noticed that the stone comes off very easily. So I have to be really careful with the bowl. Um, but the fact that it is rather delicate is uh, significant for me um, because you know our relationship with nature is very delicate. So this is the offering bowl um, where I will pour the water. Um, and then I have uh, some wooden dishes here. I have an olive wood bowl. I have kind of a set of these really nice olive wood bowls that I like to use for offerings. I have a couple of them here as well. Um, and then I have some teak, um, some teak wood dishes that I use as kind of ritual dishes throughout the house. Um, so I have three offering plates here. One is for grain. Um, one is for salt and one is for water. So what I'm using for my offerings is a regular wheat grass seed, um, just wheat grain. Um, I always offer grain and salt and some kind of libation. Um, I almost never offer mead. So we'll talk about that either later or in another video, but I feel like mead um, for me in the place where I live and the time when I live isn't an appropriate offering a lot of the time. I find that other beverages are much more appropriate to offer. Um, and like I said, maybe I'll talk more about that in another video. Um, so I have my wheatgrass seed here and I tend to, I, I like to order um, big burlap bags of organic wheatgrass seed um, just to kind of have on hand for offerings. Um, I always like to order nicer things for offerings than things I would normally consume myself. Um, so for instance, I have my salt here. This is a, a hand harvested birchwood smoked salt. Um, from Europe that I order online. Um, and of course, I prefer to kind of make everything myself if I can, but I can't harvest salt by myself. So I do order a much nicer salt than the salt that I consume for myself in my house. Obviously, I just buy salt at the grocery store for that, just regular sea salt. Um, but this is kind of a, this is a birchwood smoked, very fancy sea salt that I like to offer to the gods. Um, and then I have... Uh, distilled water that comes from my my filtered water that I use to drink. Um, sometimes I'll take water from the tap for offerings. Um, it just depends on what feels right. But um, also my dishes tend to get very calced, right? They get very um, collect mineral deposits inside them and that can be kind of hard to clean up um, and sort out. So I like to use purified or filtered water um, at, for my offerings as well. So the way that my uh, sun ritual goes on a Sunday morning, so it's Sunday morning now, um, the way that my sun ritual goes on a Sunday morning, um, I will start by hallowing the space. Um, the hallowing prayer that you'll hear that I use, I've borrowed from Baalfeld, who also has a YouTube channel. Um, it's the Wind in the World Tree, and I'll link to that channel in the description. And I'll also put the words to the hallowing prayer in the description. Um, the prayer itself is a 
paganization, a pagan adaptation of a Christian prayer from an Anglo-Saxon leech book. Um, so I will also put the citation for the original Anglo-Saxon prayer in the description. Um, but one of the things that I know that Beelfeld really likes to do and that I have kind of taken after him in doing is repaganizing things that we suspect, we don't know, but we suspect were Christianizations of pagan prayers. So it's kind of reclaiming items that we suspect originally belonged to people of a pagan faith or a heathen faith um, and readapting them for heathen use. So that is the hallowing prayer that you'll hear. Um, so I'll light the candle and say the hallowing prayer. The purpose of a hallowing prayer is to hallow the space, to kind of create a ritual mindset, um, to cleanse the space of any kind of negative energies floating around. And I'm not particularly magical. I don't really do magic. Um, and I don't ascribe a lot of a magical significance to things. For me, Performing ritual is simply about honoring and thanking the gods. Um, it's about saying, I, you're here. I remember that you're here and I am here to serve you. And uh, that is really important to me. So uh, performing a hallowing for me is kind of getting in the mental space of doing ritual, getting in the mental space of uh, preparing to honor the gods and preparing to devote my entire attention. Um, it, it's a very short ritual, but devote my entire attention to the ritual for the span of the ritual. Following that, I have um, an Anglo-Saxon, so an Old English prayer that I use as kind of an invocation, a greeting to the sun goddess, Sunna. Um, and after I say that invocation, then I go into a prayer in modern English um, that I've taken from Larhus Fernsida. Um, and I will put the uh, words to that prayer and the link to where to the original source in the description in case you're interested. I want to include all of this for you because I want to invite you to take it, use it, adapt it however you want. This is not just my ritual. This ritual belongs to Sunna. It belongs to the goddess. Um, and I want anybody who is looking for a ritual that they can use to honor this goddess um, to use mine. So please feel free to take it and use it for yourself. Don't quote me. You don't need to cite me anywhere. Like I said, this ritual does not belong to me. It belongs to her. So um, as I perform it, I hope that you'll, you know, take a quiet moment to really um, get in the space and devote your attention to the ritual as I do it. Um, because yes, this is a, a video with the intended purpose of showing you an example of a lived ritual inside a, a heathen household. Um, but it is also a seriously intended to honor the sun goddess. So um, I hope that you'll join me with your whole mind and your whole heart um, in this ritual. Um, after that's done, um, the prayer finishes with a line that prompts an offering. Um, so I'll go ahead and make the offering and then I tend to leave, you know, a moment of silence um, and contemplation to kind of uh, be in the space and kind of bask in the warmth of, of the sun goddess and, and really, um, you know, try to feel her presence. Um, it's hard not to when it's a very sunny day like this, but I do perform this ritual every Sunday, um, regardless of the weather. So the sun is always there behind the clouds or in front of it. It doesn't matter, but the sun is there. Um, but so on a day like today, it's a little bit easier to feel her presence. Um, after that moment of silence, I'll go ahead and extinguish the flame and that will be the ritual. So um, I'm going to take a minute to kind of get in the headspace and then I'll lead in with the hallowing and perform the ritual for you guys. May the gods guide me. May my oaths keep me. May my deeds free me. May my ancestors aid me always. May the gods banish from this land and wood all ill and wrong. Hallow this stead and shield it from all baneful whites. Let the gods' blessings be upon my head.
Where's to hall sonne? It great thee the sun and day, sheen on me, sheen the brat, and if me long leaf and woundlich mood. Soul, hali fesre, high leech, she who mends bone, she who removes pain. O oh, radiant goddess who illuminates the heavens and swaddles us in her warm embrace. Heaven kind maiden, she who warms the healing springs. Those who petition you know no distress, and those who wrong you know your curses, for your power is felt in all earthly things. O oh, celestial one, I approach you humbly, and petition you on this day, as I have done many days prior, that you might cure me of this sickness which afflicts me, that you might grant me bountiful strength for recovery, that you might shield me from future incursion, be it elf shot, dwarf shot, or witch's work. A gift for a gift, I dedicate and I give. May this offering please you, may this offering find you well, and may I receive your blessings should you see fit to bestow them upon me. And that's it. So let's go talk a little bit more about uh, ritual, performing ritual at home and the significance of um, Sunday and what I will do typically after I perform this ritual on Sunday. Well, I hope you enjoyed seeing that example of my Sunday ritual to the goddess Sunna. Um, again, as I mentioned earlier, one of the things that I'll do after ritual on a Sunday is uh, care for my plants. Uh, I'll, I'll take the day, I have a lot of plants in my house. Um, I think at last count I had like 30 or 40. Um, so it takes me quite a, quite a bit of time to water my plants. I have like seven orchids that I have to take care of and I soak them. So that takes a lot of energy. Um, but I kind of use that time as a devotional activity to this particular goddess um, and make sure that I'm, you know, sitting in that connection, the connection that we've just built through this example of ritual and uh, really taking the opportunity to... Um, connect to to build that relationship and to uh, think about how thankful I am for uh, this celestial body that flies uh, through the sky right obviously that's not physically the way that it works um, and uh, you know be thankful for this goddess that is in my life that does all of these wonderful things for me like growing the food that I eat and so on and so forth with that, I'll close out this video by talking a little bit about how I personally conceive of the gods, right? So today we've done a sun ritual. The sun is a thing in our physical world. It's a ball of burning hydrogen. And uh, that doesn't change. Just because you have faith and you believe that there is a goddess who is somehow associated with the sun, doesn't mean that you have to stop believing in what we know scientifically to be true about the world around us. So a little bit of theology to wrap up the video. For me, the gods and goddesses live on another plane. There is a plane of reality 
that they inhabit. And they have the power to influence the plane that I live on. But the relationship between the goddess Sunu and the burning ball of hydrogen that is the sun is not something that is necessarily knowable by me. I have felt it in my soul that Sunu is there and is in relationship with the sun. She is the sun goddess. I don't overly concern myself with rationalizing that out. Okay. I feel like it's enough for me to honor her by honoring the sun, if that makes sense. I know it's a little bit convoluted. It's very convoluted for me too. And I spent many years um, really working out how I feel about this particular issue. Um, in the same way, it's like, there are many stories that say that Woden has one eye. And for me, it's like, okay, that is a symbolism that was used to convey some information about who this God was to the people that worshiped him ages ago. Do I believe that Woden has a corporeal body that has one eye? I don't know. That's not necessarily the case. It could be the case. I'm not saying it's not the case. But what I am saying is that the gods ex occupy a different kind of space and time that is not necessarily actually the same space and time that we occupy. And it's important to maintain that possibility in our heads so that we don't accidentally ascribe something that isn't true about the gods to the gods. Um, I think that as a matter of respect and as a matter of um, worship, proper worship, it's our duty to uh, leave space for these very living deities and allow them to be themselves however they are I think that one of the things that tends to happen in the heathen community is uh, to see the gods as kind of having been frozen in the past. And I find this particularly problematic. Um, I think that this leads to uh, things like people becoming very obsessed with history. Um, I am a huge history nerd. You're going to see a lot of history videos on this channel um, where I will visit, visit ancient sites and I talk about them and I talk about the history and I talk specifically about how what happened in history impacts us today, both as heathens, as Americans, and as citizens of the world. Um, and so I do talk a lot about these things, but when I say obsession, I mean obsession. I mean the idea that um, unless one is doing things in exactly the same way that we know people 1,500 years ago were doing them, then the gods won't care about it, or it's not good enough for them, or you're not doing it right. And I think that this is a particularly dangerous idea. So to kind of bring it back full circle, like the sun, um, I really want to make it plain for everybody who's watching that you don't need to give up what you know to be true about our world in order to believe that these gods are real and that they act in our lives. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed seeing uh, my sun ritual, seeing an example of ritual as lived in daily life in a heathen household. I hope to make many more of these videos and show you kind of what, um, what I do for my ritual practice um, and how I build my relationships and maintain my relationships with the gods that are very important to me. Um, 
Let me know in the comments if you're watching this video, if you uh, have any questions about anything that you've seen today. Let me know if you have any ideas about videos that you would like to see. Um, for instance, I could do a tour of all of the altars that I have in my house and the significance behind them and why I've chosen the items for them that I've chosen and how I've set them up and so on and so forth. Um, I could talk, of course, more about the gods and how I feel about the gods and kind of the theological aspect of my faith. Um, and of course, I plan to make many videos about um, becoming pagan, um, walking a pagan path, having a pagan faith, what that means, and specifically uh, all of the kinds of beliefs that fly around um, among pagan individuals that are making things like YouTube videos and uh, what I agree and I disagree with when it comes to those kinds of philosophies. So with that said, let me know um, if you have any questions or if you'd like to see anything else. Um, and of course, if you liked this video and you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and turn on those notifications so that you can find out when I've published more videos. Um, it may be slow going at first, but I plan to make this a very active channel. So until then, I wish you a happy Sunday and have fun watering some plants.